Everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform, or you can access my official website at thereligioushippie.com. So before we get started with today's video, I was sent these two boxes from Bazadol. So they are today's sponsor. So I'm going to do a little unboxing today. If I can actually open these, that's always proving to be difficult if I don't have scissors around. I got it. What do you know? Bazadol is a veil company, and they were so kind to send me two of their veils for me to promote and to check out. So let's see here. It comes with a very cute little card with directions on how to take care of your veil so that it lasts longer. This is actually really handy. I wish more people would put how to take care of veils when they send their veils out. Whoa, guys. Wow. Look how beautiful. Obviously you gotta test it out. Wow. You guys, I love this. The gold. It's so beautiful. And then of course it also comes with some hair clips you can sew in and then also a veil bag. I love this. I love this so much. Wow. And it's nice and kind of heavy. It's like a good quality. Okay, so this is veil number one. That's beautiful. Wow. Look at that. Here's a more up-close video of the veil from the back and then from the front. And you can see the beautiful embroidered details of the gold against the black. I absolutely love this veil. On to veil number two. Wow, this one's beautiful too. Okay, so they're similar colors, but this one, look, it has the Madonna and Child. This is beautiful. Wow, I am in love with these veils. They're so beautiful. Here's this veil from the front and then from the back. And just like the other one, the embroidery is beautiful with the gold against the black. I absolutely love these two veils. They're so beautiful. Bazadol's mission is to revive the Catholic tradition of wearing veils. Their veils are all embroidered with an eco-friendly yarn. Their large embroidery and high density stitch count are the characteristics of Bazadol's veils. The embroidered patterns of their products are also very symbolic. You can find veils with Madonna and Child embroidered onto them and many other beautiful designs. These veils do not only need to be worn on your head, but can also be worn as a scarf. This act of wearing a veil and concealing a woman's physical beauty is so that the beauty of God may be glorified instead. A veil is a symbol that invites the woman wearing it to ascend the ladder of sanctity. It's also a way of emulating the Blessed Virgin Mary in her humility, purity, and submissiveness. Thank you so much to Bazadol for sponsoring this video, and I sincerely hope you will go check them out and buy some veils from them. Okay, now on to the video. So today's video, we're discussing veiling, modesty, and purity. So I put up a questionnaire on my Instagram, per usual, that's where I usually do these types of things, and I asked you guys what kind of questions you had about modesty, purity, and veiling. I do appreciate every single question. I won't be able to get to all of them because you guys gave me so many, which is such a blessing, um, but I will try to get to the ones that are the most relevant and the most important um, to this topic. Okay, so our first question is, did you veil before you fell away from the church when you were younger? So yes, I was raised veiling in the traditional Latin mass. My sister and I would always fight over this one specific veil. It was a little white veil, um, and I didn't like the one with all the like little dazzly things on the ends of it, and we had a couple of those, and this was the only like plain white veil we had, and so my sister and I would always fight over it. Um, but yes, I was raised veiling, and I still continue to veil. Okay, question two is from Becca. Is wearing crop tops and tank tops okay? Here's the thing, I think it depends on the style and how you wear it. Specifically because I have a couple crop tops that are longer crop tops, but I always wear them with really high-waisted jeans so none of my midriff shows. Um, it's still a cute outfit, but it's still fairly modest. When it comes to tank tops, I have a lot of tank top blouses, which are like very classy, um, very professional. Of course, we do have very hot days here, so when I'm bumming around the house or doing something like that, I will wear a tank top that's meant to be like an undershirt, but when I go out in public, I usually throw a t-shirt on or something like that. So if the tank top is a classy tank top, kind of like this or this, so really you do just need to figure out why are you wearing it, because I will wear a tank top if it's really hot outside. Um, but if I'm going out with friends, obviously I'm not going to wear 
the tank top that looks like an undershirt. I'm gonna wear like a blouse tank top, if that makes sense. Um, so it really just depends. And as for crop tops, again, like I wear my high-waisted pants to avoid my midriff showing, um, but besides that, I don't really wear them. Okay, our next question is, how can guys be modest? Here's the thing, there are, I feel like for women it has to do more with like how we dress, for men it has to be like more mental modesty, like thinking modesty. I mean, I know some people are like, oh, they can't take their shirt off because women can't take their shirt off. I mean, I kind of agree with that because I'm like, why do you need to take your shirt off? But I mean, that's just a personal opinion. I always find it more attractive when guys keep their shirts on at beaches or when working out, but personal opinion, I guess. I'd love to know your guys' opinion about that in the comments below. Um, but besides that, also mental modesty. Being aware of the way you talk, um, being aware of cursing, being aware of dirty jokes and things like that, especially when you're around other guys. It's so easy to be wrapped up in that mindset when you're with the other guys and you guys are like trash talking or you guys are doing dirty jokes or cursing or this or that. Um, and I see it all the time everywhere. So that's something to work on if that's the case, but those would probably be my two biggest things. Okay, our next question is, what age should I start veiling? So there is no age too young or too old to start veiling. I know a lot of traditional families who have started their babies in veiling by putting a bonnet on their head. Um, that's a great way to introduce babies into veiling. If you're an adult, you're not too young to veil and you're not too old to veil. There's no age restriction at all. Literally just whenever you want to start veiling, start veiling. You know, it might be a little bit of an experiment at first, but um, people who usually start veiling never go back. Our next question is from Katerina and she asks, how do you stay modest and pure in the world we live in today? That is a great question. I think this is something we can all struggle with because we can all fall into the temptation of wanting to dress immodestly or act immodestly, especially when it's pushed in our faces constantly. The first step is to surround yourself with people who have your best interest at heart, who are good examples of modesty as well. Usually these people can be found at your church, but not always. Sometimes they could be secular people who dress modestly. So a lot of people are really good at this. There's some celebrities like Sadie Robertson is really good at this. Um, a couple others who are really good. So instead of following immodest people on Instagram, try following people more like Sadie Robertson. Another tip I have is to clean out your closet. Don't put anything in your closet that is going to be immodest to wear because if that's the case, then you're probably going to pick that out and be tempted to wear it. Instead, just don't buy immodest clothing. And my last tip is to spend a lot of time at adoration and go to daily mass. These two things are so, so important because we're constantly out in the world soaking up what the secular society gives us. And it's so, so important that we do spend time with Jesus and we surround ourselves with good people. Okay, our next question is, I don't pursue girls who show very revealing cleavage. Is that bad? I want to pursue girls that respect herself because through what she dresses, it shows that kind of soul she has. So no, this isn't actually a bad thing. And too many people say like, oh, you have to lower your standards. Don't be so picky. Don't lower your standards. Be picky. If you want that in a woman, look for that in a woman. It's not bad to have standards when looking for things in women. Although I would say don't write it off right away, um, especially if maybe you just hit it off with somebody. Like, don't let that be your only turn off. There should be other reasons, not just that. So don't let that, like, hinder you from talking to them at least and getting to know them a little bit. But other than that, no, it's really not bad to have standards. So don't worry about that. Grace asks, how to deal with people's judgment around veiling? This one's fun. I haven't really dealt with this so much. I've gotten weird looks before, um, but then again, I kind of just chalk it up to, oh, they just saw me because I move and like humans are instantly attracted to movement. So they're not specifically looking at me because I veil. Um, they're looking at me because I'm, I'm like moving and as humans, we're attracted to that. I will say though, um, I have had friends who have dealt with this and it seems to really impact them. So one of the best things I can say is like, remember that you're veiling for Jesus. You're not veiling for other people. If other people have a problem with it, that is actually their problem and they shouldn't be judging you if they are. If you are a little more self-conscious about wearing a veil though, I highly suggest getting a veil that matches your hair color and then that way you can actually feel a little more comfortable and it's not going to be like as bright white against like stark 
black hair or anything like that. I also did a couple veiling videos which I will link below for you guys in case you're interested in those. Our next question is, do you think the rosary is one of the best tools for purity? Yes, it is actually the best tool for purity. Also praying to Saint Agnes and Saint Maria Goretti are both wonderful ways to grow in purity. So pray the rosary daily, folks. Taylor Marshall likes to say if you don't pray the rosary daily, you're not on the team. I'm not that harsh. Um, I still say pray your rosary daily, but even I fall off every now and then. We're human, that's what happens. Um, but definitely try and pray your rosary daily. Okay, our next question is, I'm unmarried with children. I'm afraid to veil because I know colors have meaning. What color should I wear? So the color you would wear is black. You can wear a white veil if you want since you're not married anymore, but because they do, they are some symbolic, um, I would say wearing a black one would be more appropriate. However, you can also just pick another color like blue. Blue's a really pretty color to wear. I wear a blue veil sometimes. Um, there's some really pretty ones out there. Just shop around, see what you want. If anything, veiling humbles us before Christ and um, it's a beautiful way to gain humility and purity. All right, our next question is from Amy and she asks, should we veil when attending a Catholic wedding? If so, what color veil would be best? That is a good question. Well, yes, first of all, yes, you do want to veil when attending a Catholic wedding. I know a lot of people are like, oh, white isn't appropriate because the bride is wearing white. But I mean, if you wanna wear a white veil, that's fine. If you wanna wear a veil color that matches your hair color, I probably would more suggest that to avoid any problems of people being like, oh, you're wearing white. So you can find one that matches your hair color. That probably would be your best bet. Should we veil when attending someone's funeral or visiting their tomb? So for funerals, yes. Um, for tombs, not always. But if you want to, there's definitely nothing wrong with it. I've done that a couple times in the past if I'm going right after church or something of that nature. But we should veil during people's funerals. Okay, next up is how to stay pure when you're really trying but your boyfriend is trying to get you to sin. First of all, you really do need to sit down and have a discussion with him and tell him, I want to be pure and I want to be chaste and these are the rules that I want to do. If he agrees with that and he actually shows initiative and he's actually doing things to protect your purity, amazing. Like that's so good. But if he's not, it's time to break up and move on because this needs to be a mutual thing. If you truly want to grow in chastity and purity and in uh, modesty, you do need to push back on this. And so sitting down and having a heart to heart conversation and being like, hey, I really feel like for my faith and, and everything, I really wanna be more modest and chaste and pure. And so these are some things that I really don't wanna do anymore um, because they make me uncomfortable and I wanna please God. If he agrees with that, again, great. If not, it might be time to either give him an ultimatum or to move on. And I'm gonna suggest a book to you. It's called How to Find Your Soulmate Without Losing Your Soul. It's by the Everett's. It's a very, very good book and it talks specifically about what you're going through. So I really suggest this book. Please go buy it. It's an amazing book. I've read it four times already and it's helped me tremendously in my dating life. Okay, our next question is, do you veil when you go to confession? Usually, yes, I do, um, especially because confession is during adoration at my parish, and so because of that, I will veil when I go to confession because obviously I veil during adoration and they're in the same area. Um, so yes, I do veil when I go to confession. Sometimes I do forget my veil though because I am human and that just happens. Um, but for the most part, I do veil during confession, even if it's outside. Okay, our next question is, do you think that having the wish of being a nun but liking someone is wrong? So no, this is just discernment. This is completely normal. I'm assuming you're pretty young and that's okay. The, this is the time to test this type of thing out and it's really important that we discern our vocation. So I highly suggest if you haven't already, go and stay with some nuns or some sisters um, with a religious order that you specifically wanna become a part of and then just spend a couple months with them or a couple weeks. Sometimes they just have a weekend go and see retreat. That's what I went on. Um, and it's a wonderful time to actually see if this is the right vocation for you. Another wonderful thing you can do is you can go to holy hour at adoration once a week or even more. I highly suggest going more, but most people can only make it once a week. Um, and asking God to reveal the vocation he has planned for you. Honestly, people forget that sometimes we can ask God for these things to show us 
the direct path. And so it might take a little time for him to reveal it to you, but you will get there and I will be praying for you. Where do we draw the line in kissing in a relationship? My girlfriend and I have been wondering. So when it comes to kissing, the main thing is, is like making out is a no-no. Basically because you're putting yourself at risk for sinning and that's basically because making out usually leads to other things. Um, so you do not want to put yourself in the position of um, potentially sinning by doing that. Like a quick kiss on the lips, totally fine. Quick kiss on the cheek, totally fine. You really don't want to fall into the near occasion of sin because that in itself is a sin, putting yourself in the near occasion of sin. Let's just say hypothetically, I'm not saying this is you, but let's just say for example, you're making out with your girlfriend and let's just say it turns you on, okay? That is putting yourself in the near occasion of sin and that's in itself actually a sin. So we wanna avoid that at all costs. Um, so again, like I said, little pecks on the cheek, pecks on the lip, totally fine. Now there are those people out there that say, no kissing at all till you're at the altar. I don't know how much I agree with that actually, but if you want to do that, that's totally fine. Um, but I don't think that's super realistic for a lot of people. So we should really be looking at our significant other as a child of God and we should want to protect their purity and not go into the occasion of sin. Okay, I have gotten a lot of swimsuit questions and since it's summer, these are probably some of the best questions to ask. So. Is it okay to wear a one piece to the pool or is a swim skirt better? So personally for me, I wear a two piece. It is not a bikini. Thank, I don't like bikinis at all. Bikinis, nope, bikinis are a no-go. Um, and that's not because they show too much of a person, it's because they show too little of a person. Um, so bikinis are no-goes. Usually they're just a pride festival and people just wanna show off their bodies. I wear a two piece, which is usually shorts and then a longer top. It's not really a tankini either. I don't know what to call it really, but the main reason I wear this is because the only time I'm ever in water is when I'm kayaking. And if I need to use the restroom or something, I am not stripping down completely to go to the bathroom. I would rather be more comfortable and just have like a two piece on. And 90% of the time I have a t-shirt over it or a flannel too. So it doesn't really matter. But there are some wonderful modest swimsuits out there that you can wear. And for your question, whether you should wear a swim, swim skirt or like a one piece, I personally have never felt comfortable just wearing a one piece. So I suggest a swim skirt, honestly, just because you'll feel more comfortable um, and the hopefully the other people around you will feel more comfortable, but that's just me. Okay, our next question is, if I'm not married, is it okay to wear a dark veil that matches my hair? Yeah. Totally fine, there's no strict rules. However, I will say that if you are looking to date somebody, um, you'll have to specify that you are not married to these people. Due to the fact when a guy sees a black veil, he sees a woman who's off limits because the black veil usually equals that she's married. Um, now, of course, if you're not looking to date, don't worry about it, like whatever. And honestly, some guys probably don't even pay attention. But if you go to more traditional churches and things like that, they're gonna think you're off limits. So there's nothing wrong with it. If, you, if it makes you feel more comfortable to wear a veil that matches your hair color, totally fine. Um, but just so you know, little heads up, guys are gonna think you're taken. And with all of that being said, I'm so sorry I couldn't get to the rest of your questions. You guys had so many good ones, um, but I hope I was able to answer most of them. And again, please go check out Bazadol and their beautiful veils. I'm in love with these veils and I hope you guys will check them out. Okay, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.